friends, today I'm gonna read you a story, The Little Mermaid. Chapter 1, The Deep Blue Sea Far out at sea, below the waves, deeper and deeper and deeper still, stood the Sea King's castle. At the very bottom of the sea, the water was as clear as glass. The sand was as fine as powder. Tall seaweed grew up and around the castle walls and small bright fish darted among its branches. The sea king was very proud of his castle. It was the perfect place to bring up his six mermaid daughters. Each daughter was given her own small garden to take care of. I'm going to shape mine like a whale, said the eldest. Mine will have a seashell border, said the next. And I'm going to grow pretty flowers, said the third. The fourth and fifth mermaids love exploring. Let's decorate our gardens with treasure from shipwrecks, they said. Then their little sister appeared, hugging a statue of a smiling boy. Look what I found, she cried. I'm going to put him in my garden. The sisters spent all day in the castle waters, tending their gardens and playing games. In the evening, as the sea turned to inky black, their grandmother called them inside for supper. Lying on silky cushions, the family ate steaming seaweed parcels and soft sea fruits. Tell us a story, Grandmama, begged the littlest mermaid. Grandmama had seen the world above the waves. She told amazing tales of men with two legs and no tail. There are buildings as tall as the ocean is deep, she said, and much the little mermaid hung on her every word. When you reach fifteen, announced the sea king, you may rise above the waves and see these things for yourselves. While the older sisters flicked their tails in delight, the little mermaid sat drumming her fingers. That's six whole years Shanty away, to the world she said. On the eldest sister's fifteenth birthday, the sea king's castle fretted with excitement. The mermaid showered the big sister with twinkling pearls. But the best present of all was the sea king's blessing. Now you can swim to the surface of the sea, he said. Come back quickly, called the little mermaid. She wanted to hear everything about the world above. Her sister finally returned, grinning with excitement. I watched the sun sink into the sea, she said. Its orange light flooded the water. For hours, the mermaids pestered her with questions. Did you see land? Were there any boats? What does air feel like? Her littlest sister was the most curious. Did the wind stroke your hair? She asked. Did the sun kiss your cheeks? That night, the little mermaid gazed at the sea above. A black a black blot glided through the air. It must be a ship, she thought. I wonder who's on, who's on it and where they're going. 
She fell asleep and dreamed of sailing the ocean. Chapter 3 Rescue from the Storm One by one, the sisters reached 15 and were allowed to swim above the waves. The little mermaid watched them rise up, hand in hand, longing for the day she could join them. As time dragged on, the little mermaid spent hours with her statue. I can't wait to see what dry land looks like, she told him. Finally, the year, then the months, then the day of her 15th birthday arrived. As soon as the celebrations were over, she set off for the surface. Goodbye, she called to her sisters, rising up like a bubble of air. With each swish of her tail, the water felt lighter. Her head broke through the waves and she gasped. The sun was setting just as her sister had described and there ahead floated a ship. The little mermaid swam closer. Lanterns hung from the mast and lively music filled the air. Closer still, she saw people dancing on deck. She stared in delight as their two legs carried them back and forth. A handsome young man appeared, wearing a crown. Happy birthday, Prince Milo! The people shouted as a hundred rockets exploded in the sky. The little mermaid watched the prince and chanted. It was as if a statue had come to life. Suddenly, the weather turned stormy and everyone ran below deck. Waves rose up like mountains around the creaking ship and a streak of lightning split the dark clouds. The little, the little mermaid rode the surf with glee, but then she heard cries from the ship. The wind and waves were battering it apart, tossing terrified people into the foaming sea. The mermaid was horrified. They'll never survive without tails, she thought. Oh, the poor prince. I must find him. Chapter 4, Finding Her Prince The little mermaid floated joyfully back to the castle. How was it? Her sisters asked together. Beautiful, she sighed. All day the sister, sisters played in the castle waters. Catch! cried the eldest, throwing a sponge ball. But the little mermaid was too busy dreaming of walking with her prince. That night and every night for a week, she swam back to the cove and gazed longingly at the empty beach. At dawn, she returned to her statue under the sea. Will I ever see my prince again? She asked. The marble boy just smiled. Why do you swim to the same place each night? Asked her sisters one morning. Little mummy blushed and told them about her prince. I've seen that prince, said the elder sister. He lives in a grand palace by the sea. Really? cried the excited little mermaid. Show me. That evening, all six mermaids rose up to the sea and swam to the palace. It stood proud and shiny at the water's edge. As the mermaids watched, a man strode onto the balcony. It's my prince, cried the little mermaid. Do you think he's looking for me? Don't be silly, said the eldest sister. 
Day after day, the little mermaid returns to the palace. Each time, she swam a little closer. When the prince went sailing, she swam behind him. She prayed for a storm so she could save him again. But it never Chapter came. Chapter 5, Paying the Price Back beneath the waves, the sister was decorating the castle for a summer ball. Come and help us, they called to the little mermaid. She tried to tie ribbons, but she just couldn't concentrate. You're not still thinking about that prince, are you? Said that said her eldest sister. The little mermaid nodded. Remember, he's a man and you are a mermaid. Her sister went on. He will only make you unhappy. By nightfall, the sea castle looked splendid. Blue flames rose up from pearly white shells, lighting the way from the gardens to the hall. Guests streamed in, wearing shimmery clothes, and a fish band sang gurgling tunes. The little mermaid pretended to join him, but she couldn't stop thinking of her prince. I have to do something, she thought. Maybe the sea witch can help me. While her sister swayed to the fish band songs, the little mermaid swam away. It was a dark and dangerous journey to the sea witch's cave. The little mermaid crossed bubbling hot mud, dodged through swirling whirlpools, and darted past slimy seaweed arms. At last, the craggy cave loomed up ahead. The ugly sea witch stood at, stood at the entrance. So you want legs to impress a prince, she snapped. The sea witch knew everything. They will cost you dearly. But I have nothing to give you, said the little mermaid. Yes, you do, the witch declared. Your voice. The little mermaid girl. But how will I talk to my prince? She asked. That's not my problem. The witch started to start a steric uh, potion. This will split your tail in two, she said. She said, and and give you human legs. The princess ride. By da dawn. The little mermaid was sitting on a sea rock near the palace. In her trembling hand, she held a bottle of the of the witch's potion. Suddenly, a door opened and the prince stepped onto his balcony. He stretched, yawned and gazed out to sea. The sight of the prince made the mermaid bolder. She swallowed the potion, jumped into the water, spluttered, splashed, and nearly drowned. Her tail had split into legs. The prince saw the splashes. Who's that? he called. Somebody help her. A servant waded in and pulled the little mermaid to safety. Soon, she was standing in front of her prince. Who are you? He asked. She couldn't answer. He asked again. She still couldn't answer. Instead, she smiled. The prince smiled back. Find this young lady some clothes, he said to his servant. She's joining me for breakfast. The little mermaid spent the whole day with the prince. She was very happy but kept wobbling on her new feet. Take my arm, said the prince. I'll show you around.
That evening, the little mermaid stood on the prince's balcony. Frothy waves danced on the rocks below. Five tears slipped by and she recognized her sisters. Come back, they cried. The little mermaid smiled but shook her head. She had made her choice. I don't even know your name, the prince was saying. But when I saw you in the water this morning, I thought of my own true love. The mermaid's eyes sparkled and her heart beat faster. I almost drowned once, he went on. I was swept to a beach and woken by a lovely princess. Tomorrow I'm going to set sail and marry her. The prince's words were like a dagger in the mermaid's heart's heart. He was everything to her, but he loved someone else. Don't worry, he said. You can come with me. But the little mermaid shook her head, sobbing silently. Next morning, she watched the her prince sail into the distance. The world she loved was lost to her. We can never go back said the witch's voice inside her head. Come to us, sang the ocean spray. Forever, whispered the foaming surf. With tears streaming down her cheeks, the brave little mermaid disappeared into the welcoming waves. The little mermaid was first told by Hans Christian Andersen. He was born in Denmark in 1805, in the town of Copenhagen, where Anderson worked and studied. There's a statue of the Little Mermaid. She sits on a rock and looks over the water, thinking of her friends. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.